Minerva. Uh, wondering if my husband's mic was live when the oh. stuff broke. No, 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 no. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? I am going to be showing you at home how you can paint these gorgeous cardinals on an old snowy fence. Helping me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He, uh, he turns all the stuff on, and sometimes, sometimes it turns on in order, and sometimes it does things that surprise him and startle him. Um, <laughs> I just <laughs> don't know. It totally what. shook you. So it did. It did. You didn't SpongeBob that moment. So also to help you in this, you can, if you check the description, there's a pinned comment if you're here during the live. In the pinned comment is a link to the traceable, is a link to the PDF with step by step written out instructions <laughs> for you guys to make it easier and also to the event page where you can see the reference and everything else that way you can print it out if you want the reference that way you can print out the pdf if you want that that way you can do everything that you need to do to be successful in this and if you want to know how much this is it's free because mm. that's how we do <laughs> Is everybody ready to paint this today? I think so. I'm certainly ready to paint this one today. So we're on a 16 by 20 canvas, which we're doing on Saturdays now. And that's when the PDF is dropped. I'm so far one a week has just been about all I could do between technical internet challenges and everything going on in life. Just one PDF a week mm -hmm. is what I'm up for. Uh, let's put our reference up here for me. So there's a 16 by 20 surface and we'll go over to the materials real fast. Okay, hold on a second here. It's <laughs> switching, remember it? I've got some yellow ochre. I have a big pouch of abstract white. I have uh, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, burnt umber, titanium white, um, thalo blue, and thalo green. Oh, I'm just realizing I put in burnt sienna instead of burnt umber mm -hmm. on the, on the um, PDF. So, easiest thing to do, to do a switch. <laughs> <laughs> you have a wireless mic now, so you can wander around. <laughs> it was rewrite the PDF or switch the page. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. But that like, kind of lets you guys know how interchangeable it is. Thalo blue, thalo green, Mars black. Wait, wait, wait. Thalo blue, thalo green, Mars black. Got it. And it's all in the description below. I don't know. I'm going to put this on the turntable. I'm trying the turntable thing. That was suggested where you put the paint on the turntable and it spins around and then I don't know, it's easier to grab. Look, Let me go look at I it. I don't think that's gonna work. Ooh. My red tube is too big. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll test out the the turntable theory. All right. Other uses for my turntable. I have my chalk pencils for sketching things in. I have my measuring tools. So I am gonna use a watercolor pencil to sketch in my birds. You could use yellow serral paper to do a, a transfer or traceable method to get mm. the image on your surface if you just don't wanna sketch it out. And by the way, that is completely okay. You can uh, use chalk too as well. Just any of those things are fine. Wishes, good health, people take care of each other. That's what I'm down to. Just good health for everybody and people take care of each other. We're just careful and mindful and we take care of each other. Hmm. So that's my wish today. I'm gonna put some white just directly on my surface. I'm like those uh, piano channels now. Woo! Hmm. All right. And I'm going to put out a little bit of my uh, nice acrylic titanium white. And next to it, I'm gonna put out a little of the thalo blue. And then I'll put out a little of the Mars Black. I'm putting these out in stages so the paint isn't drying on my palette too fast because we've been running the heater mm -hmm. and that dries out the house. Yeah. So the first thing I can do, just make my life super easy, is I can mist my surface. This is a cool trick that I do. I'm gonna get my big brush. This is a two inch brush with a mix of hog, bristles, and synthetics. And I'm gonna just brush this all in. And you can see why I picked a little bit of my blue watercolor pencil to write in that wish yeah. or intention. I am pre-priming the surface with white, not because it needs to be sealed, not because this is like a gesso or because canvases in general need this. I do this because this light technique we're about to do works better. I can see me get a little hair out of there. If you paint it into white, big, bold, fun strokes going through the surface. 
So it's a little bit wet, and I'm only going to be rushing. And anyway, oh gosh, you forgot to put up step one. Ooh, he's going to put up step one here. Hold on, hold on. Let me go. <laughs> I can go. And let's see if I can make it go. I'll put the step. time stamp. Oh, that's not it. That's a time stamp. Today, what are you doing? I'm pushing. Hi. It's, it's supposed to be. The, do you do the show? There it is. Step <laughs> one. You didn't change the thing, did I you? I did. And it didn't watch. Hold on. I'm going to go back in here. Can you do it? I can't. The paint's drying. It's paint. <laughs> Why is it's it literally this? drying on us while you work it? I'm so upset. It's not listening to me over here. Can you just say step one? Uh, hold on. I can get it to do How, it. how about this? This is step one. John's going to throw that up when he can. I'm going to try it. Paint try drying. Again. Paint's drying. Okay, you go. Okay. Step one. So, it's not step. It's not step. It's not slay. You fix that. We're going to get that up at Look, the end I, of the step or whatever. I have the, I have the right picture. Now I'm going to take a little bit of blue and a smidgey, smidge, smidge of black. And you can see it's very little. Right, and you want it more blue than anything, and I'm gonna load that up, and we're gonna come into the wet paint <laughs> that I'm bugging John about, and up here at the top, it'll be the lightest. All right, up here at the top is the lightest of the value because that's distant snow. You'll see it on your canvas; it's really light on the surface when you first do it. And you can see I'm just sort of doing a loose crisscross painterly stroke. You can handle it, crissy cross. Big brushy, brushy crisses. Have some fun with it. Mm -hmm. As you move forward, uh, we're professionals at this show, by the way. <laughs> it's true. We're just setting. It's been a minute since we've been at the easel. At the halfway point or so, I start to darken the snow. Oh, it's dried down here, sir. What will happen? Nothing bad. I'm just giving him grief. I can get through it. He knows I can get through. I'm sorry. No, he knows it. You know it. Generally. Generally. What I have done is gotten messy on my palette. So I'm just doing a darker value down here. You can see it's just darker than the distant background. I'll come get into my blue just a little bit. What am I going to do? I'm going to add a little blue and white, but it's a deeper color. And again, and you'll see the crisscross, what that does is that blends any pops of overly dark paint that might be getting in there. By going back and forth and going back over it, you're softening it. As long as the paint is wet, that works pretty wonderfully. I figured out during the initial painting that we want this area to be a little bit darker so that when we put our snow on the fence, mm -hmm. our snow on the fence shows when we make it white, white, white. And also, I, uh, it helps me um, create a sense of space. So white paint up here, all white. Blend those areas in, make sure they're all seamless. Wonderful. Is a background. There you go. You did it. Did we get step one up there? Um, sort of. It worked up there, but it, it worked out in some kind of a way. You know what? I don't know why it's it's not saving what it did because it worked right before we were doing all this, and it was like it even showed it the is right the steps. The world. It is the law of YouTube. It is the law of YouTube has. Let's honor the law of YouTube with bubbles. Mm. At least those work. YouTube, here are your bubbles. <laughs> I'm going to dry my surface. You should dry yours as well because the measuring and the pre-sketching on it works better if the surface is dry. Okay. There it goes. See, I couldn't find the button. So don't forget, man, we are super live today. What does that mean? That means that every button I push is not working the way that I told it to. Oh, and see, I just found out why that wasn't working. So, you know, that's one of those things. But check this out. This was step one of Snowbirds. So if you were looking where we were at, that, that was the completion of step one, which was maybe only sort of useful for you if... Uh, you know, you were just here. But 
we'll get the next step working. So, uh, yeah, as soon as she comes back in here, we'll go on to the next step. But I want her to see. She got her, what? We got our steps working. Did we? This okay. is the end of step one. Yeah. That was the end of step one. Yeah, but we're supposed to do the steps before we start the step. I know. But you want to do okay. that? We go? But he's tested it. Not yeah. yet. <laughs> I thought we were on step two. It's going to be really hard to timestamp this video. Yeah, it won't. It'll just be a bunch of, of John made <laughs> errors. So don't <laughs> Those pay attention. of you that are here for learning, enjoy the chaos for your amusement. All right. So let's recap. Okay. We did a 16 by 20 surface. We pre-painted it white. Working wet into wet, that means the paint I'm applying and the paint on the surface is wet and a, a large brush. Now, I used a large hog brush, but you could have used a brush like this or even a brush like this or if you felt fancy, a brush like this. <laughs> so that's really what you're going for. Figure out what's in your brush bucket. They're all fine. Working wet into wet with a mixture of titanium white a little bit, mostly titanium white, a little bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of Mars black. We did the lightest value back here. And then as we moved down, we added more blue and a little more black, deepening the value from the halfway point down. Then we dried it. Now you may, now you may go step two. Okay. Now I, can, now I can push the button, step two. Step two. Oh, for those of you in the Wayback Machine from wherever we are in 2021, because we'll be good at this by then. Sometimes. And then you'll look back and you'll go, man, I saw that early video you did. Y'all are funny. Funny, funny, <laughs> we funny. We thought we knew what we were doing. No, we don't know what we're doing. That's but not our look, thing. I... I'm going to go to my channel and like so I can watch the chat. Do you know what step two is? I do know what step two is. What is step two? It's sketching the birds. Is it? Yeah. Look, when you write like the that. steps, you kind of memorize the steps. It's extraordinary. It's super awesome. And I want to say hi to Emoji Club. So step two, sketching the birds. And again, uh, covered in bubbles, but luckily John saw that coming and put a cover on it. <laughs> you have this. If you want to see this, these are big. So you can print this out. Uh, as per your notes, these are bigger images. The text is bigger. So you'll have an easier time following that along. Sketching this out. Let's go over the measurements really quick because we want to know some things. Uh, coming from the bottom, I'm going to measure the wood fence up here Hold is on, just wait, above oh, the nine inch mark. How could we see what you're doing up there? You didn't tell you're, me you were going to reach up above your head it's and okay. measure something. So I'm going to do it again in a second. So I'm going to make a similar mark up here. These are little guides that let me know where stuff is. And the fence here ends at the seven inch mark. Are you following me up there? Some? I already saw. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be like, oh, seven inches. And so then I kind of know something about my fence, right? Yeah. Coming over here. Hold on. The fence post is about at the six inch point. And that's 15 centimeters for those of you that don't do inches like the whole rest of the world. The whole rest, <laughs> of, the world. rest of the world. All right. Now, the lean in of the fence is pretty, pretty strong. So it's. About nine inches high from the bottom, and it comes in at about five inches, so it'll be right there. Aha! Ha. And then we're gonna, I don't know why I'm laughing and I'm not taunting you, and we're gonna come in to about seven inches this way. So that's how that pole is gonna go. And the pole itself is about three inches, what is it? Yeah, three inches wide. The three inches wide. When I'm sketching that, then now that I have this, I can kind of make a nice little wood oh. fence post down. Come up. I like to shorten it just above the top, about an inch, half inch, so that it looks like the post is a bit hewn. You see how I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. Bit hewn. 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 Now we have. Our fence from here, it needs to make a journey through here so we can kind of get it to here. All right, we're going to come down here. And what's wonderful about this type of fence, about this type of uh, wood and everything, I grew up, my family actually comes from a ranch in Wyoming on my dad's side. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of this fencing. This is just some trees got cut down and turned into like 
generalish fence. <laughs> so this one comes down to the, ooh, just about the four inch mark, which is I don't know, 10 centimeters, inch mark. Sorry, I'm bad at centimeters. It's not that I don't care. It's that I was math challenged the first time and I just can't learn a second math. That's all it is. Math challenged. And this one is maybe a little bit smaller because maybe they put two posts into that fence. This one's a fascinating bit of kit. So I'm going to come up from the bottom and say this one is at two and a half inches up. Keep switching camera. <laughs> two and a half inches up. Right. And it's going to come down here into this fence post. It's about the same width. And what's great is it comes out here, kind of from the middle here, and curves up a bit and also has kind of a, a hewn feel to it. Mm. So we'll just draw that there so we remember it late, late, later. Well, we drove a fence. Yes, we did. Did you draw it or are you tracing it on? The drawing, it gives you guys plenty of time to trace it on. <laughs> mm. Now the birds. <laughs> These are always an interesting little challenge. And I can tell you, like, this bird, let's come down here. This bird from the fence is about four and a half inches high and just about three inches around. So what I've got to do is I've got to get something sort of generally like that. I'm going to put him here, and I'll make a little bit of an ellipse. It kind of encompasses that general space i like to put a little circle on top to begin to talk about their little heads come forward there's a beak the beak always helps me kind of anchor everything on the beak there's a bit of a i got a crest wings come out here tail comes down and the tails are wonderful because they do kind of a little bow they result. Oh, his his tail goes back a bit at more of an angle, and I'll show you how that's nice because I can erase what I did. Okay, let's make his chest a little bit fuller. Yeah, it gets kind of fatter mm -hmm. as we go, and then we got beak, beak markings, eye. Bird. Burp. This bird is also about three inches and about four. So you can see there, I kind of sized them around the same. I didn't really get very differently sized. He's lower from his friend because the fence post is lower. Hmm. That's all that happens. Let's give them some space. Birds like to give themselves space. And these are males. So they're, they're like, they're palling around, but they know come spring, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. I'm going to bring a little tail down. It's going to be girlfriend time come spring. And then they're not going to be so tight. But right now, in the cold of winter, they're going to hang together. I'm going to draw a little beak out here. I love my little beaks. I've got a little beak. I'm in. So to be clear, the reference that initially had up was a digital composition. Wait, baby, you don't need to see my part that much. <laughs> Too much reality. It is a digital composition that I made. So even that belongs to me. <laughs> that isn't something you can license or go find. All of it, everything that you make in that creative process, if you hand make all of it, is is something that you have. So. I don't know if that's relevant information. It is. Okay. Ooh. Jaxie Painter just joined our emoji. Hi. Jaxie Painter joined? Mm-hmm. Jaxie. Jaxie. Oh, and Patty Hoffman said, I support you with art materials and things because Very knows supportive. How much we go through. <laughs> All right. I'm going to come here and we're going to do, I like on these wings, the wings kind of have a bit of a fold together like that. And we will do a, a foot. A foot. A foot. But I'll get to it in a minute because, you know, birds. This guy is sitting here, 
and I just want to make sure the first thing I do is I make sure that I don't sit him directly on the post. And he is also, I'll give you guys some measurements. His body before tail is three. And interestingly enough, from belly and to wing is about three. So they're just basically three inch little balls that we added some tails and wings to. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. I'm going to want to microwave my coffee again, sadly. I got to get my little coffee warmer back out. Or use the new uh, insulated cups when you make me one. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to kind of think about his belly. And if ever you want to erase anything, you just get a clean brush with some clean water. You'd be like, no, changing my mind. Isn't that fun? Mm-hmm. And we'll do, we know we've got wings coming off and a tail that comes back this way. The tail is an interesting perspective, so I bring that down. Head, let's say we've got a little head here. Started out with a little oval. Put a little beak on. Put a little beak on. Little beak. Little beak. Little eye markings. He's got a little bit of his little crest coming back into his neck. Wing is that. And his little feet come right there, right there. And they kind of are over the top of this wood. Now, these are all boy cardinals. These are all boy cardinals. And girl cardinals are... More brown. They, they're designed to blend in with the tree and the nest more. Yeah. And they right, are more camouflage-y. And the boy is like, see me? I'm going to lure you away from the nest. <laughs> Actually, no, it's see me. I would like you to have a nest with me is what it is. I, <laughs> oh, watch, a, I watch a lot of bird films with my son. <laughs> so many bird films. So can you microwave bird. me? I can. Microwave me. Okay, so All right, on. guess what? That, let's recap. And, well, and then we're going to, let me recap and then step three. Okay. Okay, so what did we do? We measured out where our major objects were and took the information from this surface and matched it to this surface. We use general measurements on the birds to help us create the circle constructs. We use a big circle and a small circle to build their little heads and bodies. We used straight lines for their tails and kind of paid attention to their construction and created a loose general sketch on a dry surface that we can erase with a damp uh, brush and water. What do you think of that? Do you like the recaps? I like the recaps. I know what. Well, he's there. I'm going to read my chat. I need it. It needs to be bigger than that. I see the butcher's wife, Sherpa and John have become like space balls. Merchandising, merchandising, merchandise. Where do I have merchandise? I don't have any merch. There's no merch. I need to be like space balls, though. That's a good idea. Uh, Carolyn says, thanks all. I don't know what John's been saying in chat. He's probably like, store, store, store. <laughs> ah. Store, 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 store. I don't know. I don't think we have any store. I don't actually. Soon, though, I'm sure. But we're still testing. I have to test this mug and make sure, before any of you get access to it, that it is a that it uses its handy-dandy mug thing. That the handle works, that the gravity-enabled base functions. I wish we were funny like Spaceballs, though. You've gone plaid. Hmm? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> okay. So when we have this in... Let's look at what our next step is. Step three. I got to move this away from where the bubbles are. That's so not going to work at all. It's just a bubble saver. You had such a Monty Python opportunity there. I know I did. I'm just. I could have said. All right. Step in block and fence. Oh, okay, hold on. Just Mars just... Black Burn Sienna, which it is now. <laughs> There's your step three over there. But see, look, we Mars have Black this. Mars Black Burn Sienna. That's it. And then, all right. I'm not going to put this back over there because. I don't want it to be okay, all so covered. Do we, do we put the thing on the screen now? Put what? Yes, you can put it on the screen now. Shh. Step three. Step three. Let's add some burnt sienna to our palette, and we're going to get a nice big brush, nice big one that lets us paint in all this stuff fairly easily because we don't want to be, you know, struggling with it for a long, long, long time. What's my biggest bright that I have out and clean right now? All right, I'm going to just use this. This is a pretty That's big a good one. question. This is... 
I I know this is a Grand Prix. <laughs> it somehow doesn't have any labeling on it, which, you know, unex- not unexpected. Um, so it's a bright, you just want a brush that gives you about an inch wide. If you have my r Trooper number 10, it'll work. You just want a brush that gives you a nice big area. You're going to dip whatever brush you have in water. Make sure you don't have too much water or too little. You want to get in that Goldilocks zone of just right. All right, that's going to be everything in acrylic painting. And we're going to come in and block in, oh. which is the loose sketching, painting, and filling in of major subjects. All right, so what's the subject of this painting? Well, the fence is a bit of a minor subject. I mean, the birds are really the topic, but the fence has its own plot line. Not a black pearl pot line, plot line, but still pretty good. That was a Pirates of the Caribbean joke. See, I can tell oh. jokes too, John. You can. And we're just blocking it in. And I'm going to use fairly rough strokes, but mostly what I'm trying to do is make sure that i got a nice coverage on the canvas so that the layers that are about to happen uh, can, uh, you know, cover over that and there's not a bunch of blue hanging in. Oh, there it goes. It was like... Fun with Fitza. Hello. This is fun with Filza. Filza says hello. And I say hello back. I see Mary Myers and I say Karen GP. She is in our emoji club. So I'm going to come back here. Making that wood there. That one's kind of bent up a little bit. And I want to capture that little kind of bent up motion of it. Mm hmm. Bent up. You see, I get a little bit of water when I get out of my Goldilocks zone. What happened there? I got out of my Goldilocks zone. Now, that would have been my Goldilocks zone if I was trying to dry brush. Huh. But since I'm trying to block in, it's not. So the Goldilocks zone changes depending on where you're at in a technique. Right? Goldilocks zone is never the same. It's a moving target. I get y'all saying that. You're going to be like in your life. I was in the Goldilocks zone and it all went my way. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There we go. And see, we can paint that rough because it's fence. It's a fence. It's fence. It's, fence. it's better than wood. It's fence. <laughs> now. I'm going to paint right over those little bird tails I sketched in. Are you? Yep, I am. I'm not going to be precious and paint around them. Because as long as I know where the ends of them are, I can put the tops of them in. I'm not even particularly worried. Again, it's brown and black. They make a very dark brown. And I paint it in. And I stand back because I got my long handle brushes at the easel. It's a piratey day, I guess. And people click away. They're like, oh, God, if she's going to sing, I got to go. I thought she was just going to teach art. I don't teach singing, and I'm sure you know why now. You know why. You're sure. You're like, yeah, America's Got Talent is not your show. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be one of the speed painters to get on there with your art skills. I can do that, but I'd have to stop taking care of all you guys. To do one of those videos. You guys wouldn't see me for like a month while I prepped one. Those types of uh, paintings take a minute of thought and preparation and rehearsal. I've known some of the people that actually met the guy that invented that once. We're going to bring this in because we know that that fence post is going to be in, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's in. It's in. We got wood. We got wood. Wood, 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 wood. I'm going to rinse out my brush. Karen and Heather C are like, a fence song. Everyone's like, keep singing. Oh, you're gluttons for punishment for sure. So now i got to dry this because it's going to be really tough to dry brush over the top of it if the paint's all wet and sticky. If you're really new to acrylic painting, one of the things that may have been messing you up is not knowing when the technique required the paint to be wet and not knowing when the technique required the paint to be dry so I want to make sure that in the step-by-steps, especially in the Saturday classes and in these lessons, I really let you know, this needs to be dry for the next part of this step to work. So let's dry it. All right. Dry, dry, dry. dry. All right, guys. 
So while she's drying the surface, I will say thank you, thank thank you for hanging out with us today. We love having you guys. Don't forget to, if you would like to get a text notification of when we go live, go ahead and, t and send a message to 33222, and the message you send is The Art Sherpa. And if you send that message to us, then we will send you a message when we go live. Isn't that kind of cool? And you can also go out to our website, theartsherpa.com, and you can find out more information on how to support us through our patronage and how to find out about all these downloadables and things like that. Okay. What you yeah, got? we just painted a new dude in the patronage. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty fun. We all had a little moment. Sorry, I'm okay. <laughs> It's so weird. Ooh, look at those emojis. There's Are an emojis? emoji story. <gasps> right Heels like Right Heels got good emoji game. Like this is something I've noticed. Good emoji game. Mm -hmm. Good emoji game. All right, I'm gonna sip my oh, coffee because what I need is more caffeine. I'm gonna blow my bubbles. I'm gonna sip my coffee and blow my bubbles and say the next step is step if four. If you guys are just joining us and you don't see that we have. Um, so you want to join the emoji games, but you don't see it on your device. It's probably because you're on an iPad or an iPhone, and for some reason you can't join the you can't join in the the Facebook or I mean the YouTube emoji engine. That's why we didn't do like they tried to make us do a big promotional video, but I found a workaround because I'm like it's emoji club, but it shouldn't be that serious. <laughs> Because yeah. I don't want anyone to feel weird, and that's and so, that's they're still working out some of that stuff. Like you can't get to. Here's what you can't. The whole thing for that works on the community tab, and you can't get to the community tab. Right so on an iPad. To... So that's why we're light about it. We're light, and you know you can play emoji games with the with the emojis that they have. And I found out I can import unauthorized emojis from other platforms into YouTube. I know I've done it. I've done oh, it in the past. Unauthorized. All right. Step four. All right. Step four. Step four. <laughs> Step four, oh, let's, we, we'll go back over this. So what did we do? We took Mars Black and burnt Sienna on a big brush, and we blocked in. Blocked in means to just kind of paint it in loosely and roughly, but it's all filled in so we know where it is, and it has this nice sort of solid base color to begin with. We did like an underpainting a little yeah. bit, right? Now we're going to be dry brushing. Step four. We're going to be dry brushing and adding those first textures that create wood. We don't need to change colors, though, yet. Hmm. We don't. We don't. We don't. So now I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my Mars black, and I'm doing something called loosely mixed, which means I don't mix them together thoroughly on the brush. And I'm going to come get a little bit of this white, a li little bit. Whenever you see LC minus on the step-by-steps, that just means a lot less color. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to pull down and I'm going to paint in, in this very rough way, my wood. Actually, I got to pull this in a bit. I'm going to pull that in a bit so that the post goes into my other post. Pull that in a bit. And the same thing here. So it comes out. And I'm going to welcome Lindsay to Emoji Club. Lindsay, enjoy Emoji Club. You can emote with... So you should know, if you don't know, the brush emoji and the mushroom emoji was designed by my eight-year-old daughter for you guys. <laughs> so you have some Lunabella original art. It's true. And just brush up and down and let it streak on the surface, right? Yeah. We're letting it go around and we're making its dry brushing. It's about these layers and the layers should be rough and dry like wood. Dry like wood. Dry like wood. A well, little bit of white because this is weathered wood, right? You know, it's, it's hard to find dry wood in winter. <laughs> well, it's weathered at least. I don't know. Picky, picky, sir. It was mostly green wood. And you're like, they said it was dry wood when they were going to deliver it. But no, it's now, not. Another thing you can think about, one of the things that you might visualize in your artist's mind, things to think when you're trying to think like an artist, is imagine there are beams of light coming down. 
right? Even through the snow, even in this diffused day, right? There is light falling. And where that light hits, the value will be lighter. And where the light does not hit, the value will be darker. And just try to visualize that in your mind. And then where you're not sure, just use the reference. So, you know, you'll see when I come back through on my little weird dry brush second pass, dry brush second pass. And right now I'm making sure that the wood is well painted in. Anything that needs to get a layer, we're adding a, a bit of texture, a bit of value. All right, but if I get more of that white on there, say I come here and I, more of that up there. Rough brush strokes help it look like wood. Loosely mixed. Mm -hmm. Dry brushed. That's the technique. I'm liking these more present classes. Um in some ways, because it really, I think it's going to help um, our people go back to basics mm -hmm. that need, that want to, and then new people to onboard and start painting and have an even easier time, because that's my whole thing, is how can I get you painting and have you feel successful and happy and for it to be easy? Because if I can do that, you'll keep painting. And if you keep painting, you'll do amazing things in your life. Using your imagination is a power move for a human. Let's keep finding our Goldilocks zone, right? And on our brush, not too wet, not too dry. Come here, and you can see I pull back this sort of rough. All right, hold on a second. If you're going to lean it on there, like All right, I'll come this way. No, no, it's okay. Look, no, I, can no, it's just, fine. I have multiple camera angles. I know, but I want them to have the best view possible. But I can give them the best view possible. You can stand back. I don't mind. So what I'm doing here, maybe I'll come in and I'll make sure that this has a bit of a lighter because that bit there, and then I'll come in and now I'm going to rinse out and dry off a little bit. And I'm going to come in with my black and make sure that this part of the fence has a good shadow going. Where'd you add that? That's for others. Mm -hmm. And then around here, I want to make sure that there's a good shadow. I'll be doing this a couple of times. And then through here as well. Some of this gets covered up by snow, but it's worth putting in. Come through and dry brush a little, a little bit of shading, right? A little bit of value. Roughly. Roughly. Rough. It's got a roof. Roof. Little woody brush strokes. You can also do a pretty nice wood with a sponge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna come here and just make sure that this up here. There we go. Dry brushed rough wood fence. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Dry brushed rough wood fence. So what did we do? Now the it has to be dry before the next layer. But let's recap what we did in step four. We took Mars black, burnt sienna, titanium white. We loosely mixed it on a brush. The brush was a number ten Cambridge, which is just a hog bristle. It's a really nice hog bristle brush, but it's a hog bristle brush um, on a bright. And there wasn't a lot of water on the brush, and I didn't use a lot of pressure, and I used a dry brush technique with a loosely mixed paint. I made sure there were some darker values where there would be shadows on the fence, and we used directionality of brush stroke to help define the fence. So maybe they came down straight here, or they came across here. We were rough and loose, and when that's done, that gives us the effect of wood. Mm -hmm. And before we go on to step five, we should dry it, but I'm going to bubble for you and sip my coffee. Bubble, 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 bubble. bubble. Mm. Do you see any questions that I'm missing um, while we're bubbling it up? So bubble, at some bubble. point they would like, could you explain doing wood with a sponge? 
I can and have. Um, so the quick, super fast answer for that is I've done that in a bunch of videos. Um, and I think the funniest one is the one we did on Facebook, but put over on YouTube because it was too funny, which is there's a wreath. If you search wood, it actually is a playlist uh, using a sponge, no brush techniques. And if you go to the artsherpa.com, click on video, then you can, you can, can well. search any of those things. There. Sometimes it doesn't show up, so just know yeah, it's in the playlist. There's new website stuff coming. There's so. new website yeah. stuff coming. So, um, it's John so funny. He's like, always send them to the website. And I'm like, oh, well, and the website works perfectly. <laughs> Which is never. <laughs> never. <laughs> it's but it will be always. soon. It, it will be better soon. It, well, it would always be better soon. <laughs> We're always in a Regardless, state of better There are soon. a ton of wonderful videos that demonstrate the sponge and wood. And I don't just demonstrate the sponge and wood. I like troubleshoot it for you and I'll tell you what can go wrong and the different types of sponges you can use and all that extra information that you need. Let's dry our surface dry before we go surface. on to step five. Okay. Did you throw up step five? I can. Are you ready? Uh, you can throw up step five and I'm going to dry and put out paint. Step five. All right. That's not the one you wanted. You want the step five. This one. Step five is step what we're going to do next because I have all these buttons over here that tell us stuff. Look, there's even step five as a picture. Step five is an image. Step five is all the things. Step five. We have all of step five things. All the step five things. I just got to get used to pushing the right buttons to make them appear because all the buttons are mashed up close to each other. I mean, not putting my uh, tubes of paint back on the tray, <laughs> which I should do. I should keep them on the tray. So that I can turn the tray and find the things that I need the things when I need the things. I don't put the big pouches of abstract on there because I think that they'll just go, they will get away from me. But I may put out some of this abstract paint. Okay. Because the pro paint is skinning very fast. Okay. And that has been known to happen. I dry this. You dry it? Yeah, I still need a little dry. Okay, dry. And it's important to thoroughly dry between layers. And the reason is, is as you draw, as you add the next layers, which in this case are going to be highlights, and often that's the case, you want to make sure that the lower layer or the layer underneath is thoroughly dry so you're not picking up any of that color in your highlight layer. Um, also, the thoroughness of the dry affects how sticky the paint is against the brush. So in a best case scenario, you want all the stickiness to be the same. So, and the worst case scenario is if it's not thoroughly dry, it will lift up the lower levels. So, anyway. You've learned so much. I watch. You are a good pad of one. All right. Look what I got. Watch. And see, now that we're done and we're, we're ready done. to move on to the next step, we can button it. I love it. So now we're We should at rehearse the step. more. We should, we should do that. I'm like not even using my cup handle. Look at me not operate cup correctly. See? So we're going to go into step five. Step five is a very similar technique. But we're going to add yellow ochre into it. And we're doing that because in much weathered wood, there is not only a graying of the wood, but there's a yellowing, especially when you get away from the beach. Very often when you're close to salt, the graying will be very blue, gray, and, and very white. It gets super weirdly bleached. But like in the mountains and stuff, a lot of the wood, you know, came from pines or aspens. And so there's a bit of a yellowing to it. I haven't looked at lots and lots of tried whatever in my life to have formed these weird opinions <laughs> about the nature of wood. Yeah, your nature of wood. I got wood. I come from Ent. We are of wood. <laughs> All right. So we're finishing painting up the woods. You can throw up a, a tree emoji. A tree emoji. Emoji game. Throw up a tree emoji. And if you need any of our extra resources, they are in. I pinned a comment to the top of the live chat. It's also in the description and it's in the comments below for leaving after. So you can find those resources, any of the things that you're seeing here, they're just free and downloadable. Now I'm going to loosely mix again. I'm going to take a little of my yellow, same brush. This is that number 10 hog. I'm going to get some black into this. You can see it's loosely mixed and some white into this. And I'll come here and we're going to start to I'm on the edge of the brush. We're still dry brushing now. Mm -hmm. And add some of this extra weathering. Extra weathering, yes. Yes, extra weathering. You can get all three of the wood colors in there. I 
And it's just about being woody. Mm. Are you woody? Here, I love it up here. Add more of a highlight there, I think. Just brushing down. And you can see it starts to just really create that sense of wood, doesn't it? It really does. Maybe that and a little bit of the white. Just mixing it up. You've got a minute to play. You've got a minute to do this. I'm not pressing too hard. My brush strokes are a little rough, and that's because that rough brush stroke kind of helps uh, do the wood. I went and just grabbed some burnt sienna and some black. So what we're doing here is what's called varying the color or varicolor, and we're just letting all these different little colors play together on our surface. Add a little highlight right there. Come back into the mix. And you see it just stays loosely mixed, right? Mm -hmm. Loosely mixed. Do, 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 do. If it's a darker color when you're offloading the brush, because sometimes you're going to discover what it is as you get it off of your palette and onto your canvas. If it's a darker color, you'll put it at the bottom of the wood post. But if it's a lighter color, maybe you put it up at the top. You don't want to paint out everything you've already done. Otherwise, it wouldn't be like the rough, dry brushing that you're trying to get going. You know, where you need to have a little more of the deep dark, you can always come back in. I like to also come along here and... Make sure that this is there. I do take a lot, some of this out, like as I put the snow on, but it does help me, especially like what if my snow didn't cover every part of this? Sometimes I plan for how things might go because paintings aren't perfect little moments. And that's a little yellow. So I get my white into it because it is kind of weathered out. And Just work that out as you need to. You're good. So now you can kind of see that this fence is pulling up. There's a lot more, I don't know, like woodness of it. Mm -hmm. Questions are all in caps, says Lindsay. Yay, bubbles. Yeah, you're not yelling at me if you ask a question all in caps. It's completely fine. I totally get it. We're good. Now, uh, what? let's recap. We're going to uh, let this dry because okay. the next part that we're going to do doesn't work unless this is dry. But we'll recap what we did. We took yellow ochre, burnt sienna, Mars black, and titanium white. We again used our hog bristle brush. Uh, we dry brushed over the top, loosely mixed, letting it streak, letting it be rough, letting it kind of create the wood. We created little highlights where they were necessary and shadows where they were necessary. And now we're gonna dry it before we go on to step six. We're almost to the halfway point. I know. Which step six is blocking in the birds, so I'm ready for that. Let's step it up. I'm going to dry, though. Dry, dry, dry. Dry, dry, dry. Dry your canvas. All right. So, yep, and she's right. We're moving on to step six. And I'm going to say oh, thank you guys. Come hang out with us. It's been really fun seeing everybody here today hanging out. We always like to uh, remind you, if you're thinking about drying your surface, um, don't use heat. And hit the subscribe button while you're here. Click subscribe. Um, click the little bell next to it, and you can click the notification thing, and you'll get a notification of when we go live. So thank you very much. And that's what that little belly thing does down there. Um, so, but you know, you've probably seen that before because you've been here before. And I never know how long I'm going to have to take just filling dead silence with random things to talk about. So, you know. Have you step six to us yet? I have not. And again, remember the step, the written out step by step with descriptions and extra tips and all of that and all then? the step references. That's free. You just download it. What? Are we Listen. officially now on step six? 
Officially, yes. Okay, here we go. Step six. And here's your picture. That's what we're doing next. A way to save money in acrylic paint is to not put out the paint until you need it. I don't ever get to do that on my show. Um, I'm starting to. I'm just like going, I'm going to do it because it's a good habit to get into, right? So I put out my CAD red medium. For everything that I'm doing next, it's going to be CAD red medium and black. We're going to make a very dark color. I'm going to use this number eight cat's tongue from the Art Sherpa line. Mm -hmm. You could use a round. You could use a bright. You can use whatever brush you have. You don't have to run out and buy anything, right? That's not required. You just want something that gives you control so you can paint in the birds. The other thing that you're going to do, this is a big tip. Pro tip right here. Pro tip. I need to do nice long strokes for his tail. So if I put some low tack tape and I'm burnishing it down with my finger right here, I can do that easily on his tail and not have the strokes look kind of awkward or rough and he looks good and it's just a good way to go. And then when it's all done, I can peel it off. I'll show you how to get the color. I'm going to take my number eight. I'm going to load it with my red and some black. If you watched my how to make brown video, you know that makes a brown. But if you keep it more into the red, it's I a brick color. What? I love that. How to make brown. That's like, <laughs> it's, it, everything seems to be the intuitive mistake. <laughs> like you, making brown, you can you can never make the brown you want to. You always like, ah, I'm going to make purple. Nope, got brown. All right, I'm going to make forest green. <laughs> no, I got brown. I want to make that cool red color. No, I got brown. Okay, well, a lot of mistakes do make brown. A lot of color mixing mistakes. Now, on the bird, I don't bother to paint in the little markings on the face yet. I kind of work around that, right? And I'm blocking in, but I'm also, like, paying attention to the contour lines, right? Because I'm, like, sketching them in. And on the edge here, I'm going to go on the toe, and I'm going to flick this kind of away because he's got some little up feathery things. Here on the wings. When I get to the wing part, I'm going to flip my brush, handle up, right? I'm going to come here. And that kind of helps me get that sense of some feathers. It implies them. It's the first of that. Oh, I'm going to round his back out a little bit. Let's, let's make him a little rounder. Mm -hmm. Every bird, every time you change a little thing in your bird, your bird's personality will change like, per, like personality a bit. So they'll start out, sometimes they look lean and angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes they look disgruntled and fat. You know, it's just really about what you're painting. Yeah. And I'm just going to paint in all the birds except their faces and beaks this way. Now his little belly kind of comes down and really almost touches the fence. So I'm going to play with that. And I'm also going to put some little flick outs of feathers on his little chest because he's fluffed because it's cold. We wouldn't want him to not be fluffy. Oh, kind of went way down on that one. It's okay. Come back for the tail. It'll all work out on the mm -hmm. wings. It's, you know, I think folks are really excited to see you back at the easel. Are we excited to be back at the easel? Well, there was a We're lot of back comments. Back at the easel again. What? There were a lot of comments earlier that this format, you know, you just don't see it elsewhere, and we've got a lot of, you know, you, it, it. They were very happy to see that we could get the close-ups again. So I got a little too much water in my brush there. I got out of my Goldilocks zone. Is that what that is? That that's water? what that Ooh, it's is. Dripping. That's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off my brush. Come back and pick up where, before it drips, pick up the excess paint where it gets away from me, right? Mm -hmm. I'll dry it. I can actually let it dry while I'm painting other birds and come back and fix it. So that's what it means when you get out of that Goldilocks zone. A little too much water, it gets drippy. It doesn't cover. It's very washed out. Not enough water. It doesn't spread out or thin out like you need it to. So that's what you're looking for in the Goldilocks zone is it's getting the results you want the way that you want it. Now, on this bird, I come right up over the fence. Mm. 
And this is where we learn how object relationships create placement in a surface, right? Yeah. This bird, because his tail is broken, the fence covers his tail. It appears that he's sitting, you know, behind the fence a little bit with some of his tail covered. This bird looking this way, because the tail comes in front, looks like he's sitting there. Either not any of those places. It's made up. Mm. <laughs> we just make it look like they are. Catch the overall shape of his tail. Mixing up a good amount. You can see I'm trying to get in that Goldilocks zone with the paint, which is here where it just smoothly covers out, but it doesn't drip or dry. For this, for this technique. It really is funny to see the the folks that have uh we we haven't done this format in a while so some people are like wow we love the new format it's like wow, this is almost <laughs> our oldest format yeah. i just we think we haven't done it in a hot minute <laughs> i guess it's been a hot minute i don't know about you guys but i lost all sense of time once covid started i it's don't know how true. long it's been that anything's happened it was in the before time that it we was had. in the before time that we did an easel show <laughs> Ah, the before times were good times, my friends. Good, good, good times. All right. So I'm going to come here. Add some little feathering off the back of his head. You can just flick out the brush to get that. I don't have mm -hmm. to do it all perfectly. We're just going to generally talk about it. Fast bird. He, uh, He's got the fast bird hair. We're very blessed that we've got a little grip of these birds that are eating some weird berries on our fire bush out my kitchen window. So it's Those like would such a good morning. Huh? Those are fire bush berries. Fire bush berries. Fire bush berries. Fire. They put the fire in the belly of the red bird. Oh, Tamitha Holcomb says it is her first time live. Hello, Tamitha. Hello. Welcome to the live. So again, we're going to just block in this bird. This is a wonderful time because you're just kind of putting in placement. You're just figuring out where your objects are. You're not being precious. You're blocking in. You know, and then he, he's got some little feather, 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 feather. Just nice little feathy bits. They've all got 80s hair going on. Yes, they do. The 80s were the best of best hair. They were the your hair should never fit in a car. It was the most. Well, depending on well, look at my head right now. Like obviously, I feel like I paid my dues, and this is happening. So. See, I feel like in the beginning of the 80s, they had aerodynamics involved, you know, because there was like, you kind of went from the mullet to spike, and you know, the five spiked hair and the feathered hair. And then towards the end of the 80s, they started putting the air brakes on because the hair got big and <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's a parachute. It's going to stop <laughs> you. <laughs> right? So see, this part isn't precious, right? When we're getting to the final painting... Right when we're getting to here, well, there's our little reference for today. For right we now, we gotta we gotta get to here. He's got a little parrot, and I gotta get him kind of worked out. But this is where it is now. For the next layer to work, I do want this to be dry because I don't want to drag my hand through wet paint. So I'm gonna dry right. it. Okay. Dry that surface. Make sure it's all good to go. Um, turn that down a little bit. Oh, there we go. So. Thank you guys for coming and joining us. We love to see you guys here. We've got a wonderful crew of people. Very nice to see you. We, we, it's your first time seeing here, us here. Welcome. If this is a returning show, welcome back. If you haven't been here in a while, it's, we've, oh, what's she doing there? She's all getting, oh, she put some touches on that. Probably because she wanted a little extra layer before she got to the next thing there. So, yeah, you got to make sure you get the, get the thoroughly dry and she wants to 
I see. She wants to peel it with you, so she wanted to make sure it stays on there. Oh, oh no, it's not peeled yet. We have to finish his tail all up. He's a minute before we peel. A minute, a minute before, you before peel? we peel. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. We're going to be doing faces. We're going to be working on the faces. Faces. So we're going to get the faces in, and that means I need to put out a couple new colors. i got to put out a couple new types of paint and a couple new colors and get some different tools. I'm going to put out my CAD yellow medium. That's definitely in the face. I'm going to get a number four round. Yes, and I'm going to get a detail brush. And I'm also going to put out fluid paint. Okay. I'll show you the bottle, but we'll talk about some alternatives. Now, look, I think this stuff is the best. Is this the best, the best, the best, best. Huh? Are, we, are we in step seven? We are uh, about to be in step seven. Yeah, so you, can, you can put up step seven. We dried it. We're ready to go. Are we ready to go? I'll do this all over again. Step seven! <laughs> so it matches your PDF and the time. So after the video is over, I'm going to go back through and bookmark each chapter when the steps are. So when you're on your booklet, if you're doing the booklet, the timestamps and your booklet and everything matches up and it just makes it easier for you on the repaint. Mm -hmm. I love doing this stuff. Okay. So I put out CAD yellow and put out fluid white paint. Now I love golden fluid. It's amazing. If you can't do this right now or can't find it or it's just not in budget or whatever it is, deco white craft paint in the bottle will work. Mm -hmm. So fear not. Fear not. All right. Now we're going to get some face and feet in and we're going to get a beacon. First thing, I get my number four round and I may go ahead and get myself some cleaner water. Cleaner water right here. And I'm going to load up with my black. I bring the brush over and I'm going to load and load. And loading is about pulling the paint and the brush through each other so that it fills up all the belly of the brush, which is in here, but not too much water because then you're out of the Goldilocks zone for this type of painting. And I'm going to start to paint in. A little bit of this black marking that we see on Mr. Cardinal's face. Mm -hmm. Little back marking on his face. All on the toe of my brush. Let's come over here. Little black marking on Mr. Cardinal's face. A little triangle shape. And they're all a little different. They all have a little bit of personality. So you're okay. However, you got to get those on there. Ooh, I love Lindsay Maris has dropped some gnomes. Oh my goodness, the emoji game today is so good. Trisha Woods says, thank you for the timestamps. I love it. I don't know if the others of this, uh, I don't know of others of all of this because you are who I watch, but I'm wanting to shout out a thanks. I love you guys. I don't either because I have to watch me too to make sure my videos don't suck. I don't have a lot of free time. Sometimes I catch my mom. Sometimes I catch my mom. All right. You can come here and uh, put in a little black face. I do like doing these extra things because you know what? Here's the thing. Uh, learning is a very individualized process. And sometimes... Everybody needs a different thing when they're learning. So one thing may not work for a person, but another thing could. And I like to make sure that we have a layered learning experience. I'll put a little line in here for foot and another little line in here for foot. I moved to, I don't know where my, where my snow is going to be. My snow may have to move over here because like I wouldn't be there. I don't know. We may still put it in because it's in the, ori the original. Let me get that. So I'm not going to do his little toes in. And the reason is, is because I need to have delicate, delicate lines. And that'll be easier with my detail brush. Here's a little bit for his foot. Rinse that brush out super thoroughly and get the detail brush involved. Mm -hmm. Right? Go load up your detail brush. Hi, Twix. Down the little stairs. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. All the treats have been given to me and now I'm on my way. So the birds do have three front toes and one back, but not always do the front toes always show. Sometimes they're hidden by the middle toe. 
Yep. You got to think about that when you're painting that in. How would the bird's other little toe show? That's all you're done. If I, if I, I'm going to make a suggestion for some mm -hmm. folks, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say bonjour to everyone from France who's just joined us. Bonjour, um, ça va bien. If you, if your, if your image on the screen is a blurry, check down on the um the gear and make sure you're in the highest resolution because sometimes it'll downgrade your video quality, which will make everything a little blurry. So you can try that. It will work. It happens to me when I'm watching. Yeah, you're like, how come this is so blurry? And then you're like, oh, I'm in 320 mode. And all of a sudden you put it in 1080p and you're like, oh, I can see. So the, good. I can see the texture on the canvas now. He's just gripping the wood, gripping the wood. All right, now we see a little bit of a back toe here. Is that the bird equivalent of breaking the law? Breaking the law, breaking the law. I think for uh, woodpeckers it is. <laughs> And then he, his little feet are really tucked under him, so you really only see his toes. I, in my experience, new students are really hard on their bird feet. Let it go. Don't worry about it. It's not important. It really isn't for the painting. It's not the biggest thing in the painting to worry about. Like you want to worry more about overall techniques and how the whole piece comes together holistically. But don't get too caught in the little stuff at first because it'll it'll take you off your path. Off the path. Off the path. If you want to like make a, f like, so say you over thicken a foot, you're like, that's a uh, little thick mm. and you want to take it back. You would just come back with maybe a little bit of your background color, right? And kind of trim it up. See? Very easy to do, as long as it's dry. And that's having a little resty moment, and that's the black. Till we get to the eye. Now we're going to put in the beak. The beak. The beak. The beak. The beak is on fire. What type of brush am I using? I'm using a TAS, that's an Art Sherpa number one detail round, and I'm using an Art Sherpa number four detail round. So basically what that means for you, because maybe you can find my brushes, maybe you can't, you want a good synthetic round with a sharp point that will let you do nice thick and thin lines depending on pressure, a little bit like the way we do calligraphy. And then you want a teeny tiny detail brush so that you can do little fine line hairline details. Wherever you get those, however you get those, it's all good. Does not have to be what I have. I'm going to take my red and my yellow and I'm going to make a middle orange. It's kind of like the red and, and yellow are mixed together and they make a nice little orange. Bunch, a bunch of folks went, oh, the gear revealed high definition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know, woo! That's exciting, isn't it? You While this is having a little bit of a dry, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of black on the toe of my tiny brush, my detail brush, um, and come here and make sure I make a line. I like to make the top beak a little bit bigger than the bottom. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you, Craig. Craig thank says, in Lifebook, you're one of my favorite chapters. Thank you. Thank you, because the teachers in Lifebook are amazing. So that really says something. That really does, because they're all so incredible over there. Craig. Craig. He is you know totally what? biased, Let me though. see here. <laughs> in all fairness, you're super biased. There it is. I'm biased about you, too. So sad about Glow. I've okay? been following it on Twitter, too. Greg and I follow some similar stuff on Twitter. Mm. My Twitter experience is delightful and wonderful. Because <laughs> I just do art. 
Now, is it okay if I leave the link to uh, the Lifebook here? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm please go ahead do. And just leave that for the, you guys. If just you so guys want to know about Lifebook, Lifebook is a year-long course where weekly a different teacher teaches their style, techniques, and a unique painting to you. And by the end of it, you will work with 30 teachers. Uh, there's generally two lessons a week, more than you could do in a year. I mean, less, keeping up is, is like amazing, but it's very transformative. It's about healing. It's about restoration. I am but one of the teachers in the program, though I do have a really cool lesson for next year mm -hmm. and, uh, and a really cool gift, I will say. So that's something to look at if, and it's also a good gift. I've given it as a Christmas gift and you can give it as a Christmas gift. I've given it as a Christmas gift yeah. to family. All right. So when that's there, I'm going to come back with my round and I'm going to add a little more yellow into that mid orange that I had. At this point, the paint is dry and I'm looking for my Goldilocks spot where there's just the right amount of water and paint. And I'm going to come up and just at the top, maybe a little more yellow. Actually do more on the beaks than you would think. And then I'm going to get a lot more red. Make a bright orange. Oh. Kind of blend that in, went into wet on the beak. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. If you overpaint back into his face, since you're coming back with some black in a minute, this is when you can second coat it if you need that. So, you know, don't don't stress at this stage. Don't stress. I might have to put that black line back. But again, I'm not gonna stress about that. Not at this stage. Too soon to stress. Too soon to stress. Smudge it. Uh, smudge it. In just a second. He's all smudged. He's got smudged. Sometimes they get smudged. Rinse brush out before paint is dry. Thoroughly fix mistakey smudge. Mm. So Lorelai asks a good question. Lorelai has a wonderful name. Okay, how, that's a quite good question. Uh, how big is the traceable? Uh, and how do we print it for a 16 by 20 canvas? Uh, I'm going to sound I like can... I'm saying a dirty word. What do you have a different? Uh, so there's a very quick way you can do this. Oh, okay. You feel... In your printer, you select output size and select 16 by 20. And then there should be a poster tool, which allows you to print across two oh. pieces of paper and then they'll t overlap each other. So each printer is a I'm little I'm going to have you make a PDF yep. of that because the advice I've been giving is much more complicated and not as easy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. I'm not even going to give my advice. It's, it's in the printer, good. but yeah, there's a. There's but the a, word I was going to say was rasturbator. Yeah, th th that's more that, that complicated. Sounds, yeah, that does sound more complicated. But you can specify your print output size in your printer settings. So it's generally under like advanced, and you just go in there and say, I want to output a 16 by 20. And it'll say, Would you like to do this across two pieces of paper? And you say, Yes, and do it poster. So it overlays it. And it, th there's some things like that. And I'll, I'll post them up. That's kind of wonderful. Yeah. Well, while this is having a bit of a dry, I'm going to come back with maybe a second layer of my black. Just to be sure on my faces that, you know, I can kind of come in and make some detail. I just like the, the face markings to be quite dark. It's a preference that I have. Mm-hmm. When you're doing the step by step, I give all of the steps at once for each area, but let you know if you're letting something dry, just paint a different thing. Yes. In this in this thing when you're doing the face. I come around there and there's a bit of a scoopy scoop. I may come in and uh, also refine his little fine line which we lost. And his little fine line which we lost. While this is all having a bit of a dry, <laughs> it's like it's recovering. Huh. I'm going to get, if my blue paint has it completely, completely dried out, I'm going to get a little white into it. And that makes kind of this blue highlight. Let's come in here and maybe uh, highlight some bird toes. It's 
So it's not like a white highlight, right? It, it's a little kind of bluey gray highlight. And it really helps them feel like what they are. You know, it's a subtle touch and it makes a big difference. Twix, what are you doing? And you sit down there, you know, got a spongy spot. You can sit on the spongy spot. She's like, I want to just. She's been basking people's. today, very strangely. Up in the up in the sunlight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I've got this fluid paint. You see this here? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a small amount of it on my brush. I'm gonna come here and a bit back on the beak. I'm gonna add a little bit of an eye. And come here and I put it here like at that back point of the beak and if you get too much white you can always come back with the black to uh, what is trimming it in mm -hmm. so I'll do that where I have too much white And while that's having a bit of a dry, I'm going to take some of this white and some of my yellow and make a beak highlight. And come at the top, down, and a little bit back here. You know, sometimes things seem real complicated, but it's really, there's just layers. But the techniques themselves are super doable. So I think about that a little bit when I'm rating the difficulty, like, if you aren't like I think I asked myself if you understood all the layers would you be able to do it is it the layers that are your or your obstacle or is it the skill required for the techniques what Twix is growling at the door <laughs> Twix is growling at the door <laughs> she's staring at the doorknob and growling at it as you would as you would if you didn't have hands <laughs> that stupid thing. Where'd she go? She's over there by the door. <laughs> Crawling at the door. She's, yeah. She's so cute. The reflection, the eye, right? We're going to come in here and we're going to take some of that blue we used on the feet. Oh, you're over there. Right you're on that eye. to the other one. And then I'm going to come here. And a little bit of that eye. And let's do a couple dot reflections. Lindsay says she's done almost every painting I've taught. Let's see how, what's the number? What's your number? It's got to be like, all, it's got to, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I wanted to, I, it could happen. I have wondered because I saw that Julia Julia movie mm -hmm. and I wondered, do you think someday somebody's going to come through and just paint every lesson I've ever taught? I just everyone. I don't, I don't know. That was so. I feel like we should like come up with some sort of weird certification <laughs> for people that did. I'm going to come here and add a little bit of a reflection on each eye, a little bit of a dot of the bright reflection. I don't paint out my blue. It just helps it feel you know, a little more real. And then I can come in with my black. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm just like looking for where I want to make refinement. And just mm -hmm. if I need to paint out, like the, the white line got too thick, sometimes it's easier to subtract than it is to add. Isn't that crazy? But it's yeah. true. Easier to take away than to add. There we go. We've got some bird eyes and faces. And that doesn't need to do, we don't need to do anything more specifically with that. So we can put, step it, at, this was the halfway point. Yeah. So I guess we're now on step nine. Yeah. Is that right? No, step eight. Step eight. We're on step eight? Mm-hmm. Okay. To make sure that PDF is correct. I want a cup of coffee. Do you? Do you think you have a minute for me to go make one? Um, I can make a cup of coffee. You want to make you. me a cup of coffee? I can. Or I, or could. Yeah, I can cup of coffee for okay. you. You're okay. All right. So so review. Do your. I've got a review. And then. <laughs> While I'm reviewing, you coffee because that takes a minute. 
So on the faces and the feet, what we did is we painted the face markings in with just pure Mars black and a number four round or detail brush. It gave us just some space. We also put in the feet. We remembered that there were three toes on the front of the feet. And while that was having a dry, we came in and painted our beaks uh, with a mixture of cad red and cad yellow to kind of a medium orange. We put a black line dividing in there and then we came back and we put a little highlight on. While that was having a dry, we added a blue and white highlight to the feet. And we also had a blue and white highlight in the eye that we did later on. We have a highlight of yellow in here. We came back with a darker orange and where the beak is here, we kind of came in darker orange, darker orange, darker orange. Came back with black, refined the area around the beak. We did white to outline the eye. We put that blue reflection in there and then a white reflection. So that's what we did. That's what you did. That's what you did. To recap, that's what you did. I'm waiting on coffee. All right. Um, uh, Lou, Lulabel says, I, got, I have a cup of tea. And Lindsay Herbert says, the art Sherpa, question mark. Hi, Lindsay, how are you doing today? Um, and then uh, Hope Healer says, coffee break. And I'm like, yeah, I need some coffee. I need some coffee. So for me, I'm powered by caffeine. Caffeine and creativity are what keep me, I'm like made of that. So <laughs> that's what keeps me going. Um, I'm kind of curious to you guys right now if I can ask, and I do read the chats after our shows, um, like while I'm bookmarking and doing the chapters and stuff. Um, what do you do? What are you made of? I'm made of, of coffee and creativity and sugar and spice and everything nice. What are you guys made of? I'm kind of interested. Uh, so there's a delay on that. And then, uh, Lurely. Oh, it's uh, Lourly, says it's Lourly. Oh, are you French? Is that what that is? Lourly, Lourly. All right. Victoria C. said a message, but she changed her mind. She's like, nah, I'm not going to say that. What's his spelling typo? I do those all the time. And then Virginia Welsh says, you're a fantastic teacher, all in caps. And Ashley's like, I'm a little obsessed with her paintings. I'll take it. So on the uh, PDF, we're going to be coming into this space. We're going to be doing the bird feathers. We're going to be using cad red and Mars black coming up. And then we're going to be getting into the cad red and cad yellow to do the highlights. And I'm going to show you some techniques, some brush strokes that help create the implication of feathers that really look like feathers, that really feel like feather, feathers, but you're not having to like paint out every little, oh, there's the coffee. I got to taste it. Tasty? Should it, so how, how do we think you did? Mm -hmm. I'm ready for the next step. Mm. Did you add sugar? No. Mm. It's actually okay. It's super creamy. I don't need sugar anyways. Shall we bubble? Shall we bubble because we're on step bubble. eight? Step eight. We've it's now bubble. passed the halfway point. We're nearly done. It's easy from here. We've just passed the halfway point. It's nearly done. It's easy. I must stop doing that. <laughs> There's your step eight photo <laughs> with the tape on it. See, they match the tapey tapiness of it. Tapey. I just taped you early because I realized you needed it sooner than I put it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're looking at the reference, you really want to look at where are the shadows, where are the highlights, how are we going to paint that in. So we know that we've got some highlights up on the chest. We have some highlights coming up here. We have two stages of this. Sorry. We have two stages. I don't know if you can go up there. Uh, we have yeah. two stages of the reference. Hold on. I can go up there with the other camera. No, no, it's okay. That's okay. In the, there you go. All right. So there's two stages to get to this layer. Uh, I can bring these down here. I should do that next time. Two <laughs> stages to get to that. Yeah. So this is the first layer of it. There's three layers in total on the birds. We're going to use our number eight cat's tongue. I'm going to come in and we're going to start to do shadows and highlights. So the first thing that we know on the birds is the darker colors on the bird are cad red with a bit of Mars black. Brighter than the blocking in color, which is what you see me looking for. It's like on areas of like his belly, see? That would be darker. 
trying to find my Goldilocks zone. It still feels a little wet for me. And come here. Pull up. Ooh. Slow that pull camera up, down a little bit. Oh, pull yeah. up, and it's those. This brush is on its side. You could do this with a rounder or filbert. You just want to pull up to catch it. Catch it. I'm going to come here into the wing. Again, the wing is a bit darker. Oh, but darker than this, actually, interestingly enough. The wings are much darker. So I've added a lot more black. And that layering helps me imply what's going on with those feathers. And on the wing, on these birds' wings, their wings do tend to be a bit darker. I also have right here at where the head hits the chest, there's a bit of a shadow kind of coming on. I'm maybe going to pull a little of this up here. Because, you know, his belly is, is blocking light. But I can get back into my brighter red. Mm -hmm. Kind of blend that in. Be like, no, no, no. God. And he'll be like, oh, hi. I mean, if you think that I do. Add a little bit right here. Kind of softening that out. Let's continue on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So for this bird back here, I do, again, want that darker uh, feather. I'm going to come here. A little darker. You can see that I'm building them in. I'm staggering them in. Let me get that darker. You can really see that. Then when we come towards the top, this feather shortens, and then it's going to curve around and come back the other way to have the wing bow in. So we're, we're here, we're here, we're here, and we're here. And you can see how that implies those wings. I can, again, kind of add a little bit of that shading there. It was confusing. Um, Victoria was like, what was that thing on the tail there? And then didn't realize it was the tape. It's tape. It's tape. <laughs> it's tape. So he's got some dark little values, right? Like under here. And his little tail. Maybe like even right here coming down. And you can see that second color. Now we're considering things a little more. Add a little bit of this value inside here. The wings, much like everything else, are much darker. So I've got to think about this when I'm doing his little wing. Mm -hmm. Layering those strokes in to talk about those little flight feathers again. Maybe a little bit around his chin that we can layer up on. Even as I layer up in his wing, I want to make sure that we've got a nice little shading. So we're kind of getting there. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to take a little bit of this. I don't mind if it's toned a bit with black, but I'm going to bring it over to the yellow. And we're going to make just a slightly brighter orangish red. And come over here. Oh. Now we're going to really kind of do some varicolor in this area, right? Where we kind of vary between the oranges and reds. But how we're guiding ourselves is we're like, you know, what value would be, would be more realistic to have here? Sometimes I might get a little more red, but I'm not trying to get my pure cat involved. Not yet. And you'll see me come back to really sort of tone my paint. A little bit of that. Now coming up on his little head.
And then on the cheek, I'm going to bring this back to imply a little bit of feather coming there on his little cheek. Too light. You just got to get back into that. We still need to be darker. There we go. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. He's looking birdie. Birdie. I'm going to put out a little more red. I'm going through that pretty quickly. And we're going to really find the definition on wings and all kinds of things. To get my brush wet, I'm going to find my Goldilocks zone. I am making a brighter red than the blocking in color. Not my brightest red that I'll be using. I can come in and get a darker value. I need it. Pull that up into the tail. That can kind of come up into here. Now I know I've got very dark feathers that I've got to really think about here. I'm going to make sure that those are defined enough so that when I come put the final highlights on, the wing really shows. Mm -hmm. Back into a lighter red. Look at the black in it, but it's lighter. Any man in. Brighter, brighter. I got a little aggressive into his black markings. I just come back with a brush that's damp and kind of push that back a bit. It's kind of like a racing. And maybe there's a little bit of kind of orange highlight right there. Just a little bit of thoughtfulness. Thoughtful, thoughtful, thoughtful. Get into this right here. And we're just playing between the highlights. So we know his little chest. Got a little bit of a right here at this point. And then we got a little bit at the neck. Maybe coming down the definitely at the tail. I'm going to highlight the top of the tail. And then a little bit this side, but I don't highlight the bottom. Get a little bit more of my red into it, but there's that black toning. So it's redder. Mm -hmm. We're moving into that red. I'm going to leave a little bit of my darkest value kind of underneath the wing there that I painted in. Even as I paint his little underbelly a bit redder. So Brian was curious. Okay. Brian, what are you curious about? Is there a reason you using uh is is there a reason black is being used as the darker areas instead of mixing cad red with diox purple like the rose painting for the shadow? They both work. They both work. So in the rose painting I wanted a a sense of burgundy and that kind of depth and I also doxazine purple is very transparent so it blazes really well as does alizarin. Um, in the car, I wanted you guys to see how ultramarine is a neutralizing color and can be used. And I'm showing you in this one how you can use black. Uh, the thing to remember in art is there's just so many ways to get there. And there are little subtle differences. But what this does teach, if you paint with me for a minute, if you do one and done, you're going to have a great painting and you're going to be so glad I'll give you step-by-step step and you're going to hang it on the wall and you're going to feel great. 
But if you continue to paint with me, what you're going to figure out is that there's so many ways to get to the end result. There isn't just one way. And so you as an artist, after a while, will be sitting there with your paint box going, yeah, I didn't have any of the blue I wanted today, but I can get there with black. You're never going to feel stuck. Uh, you know, when I started doing this, one of the things that I, I wanted to really change was that I saw a lot of artists were uh, new artists uh, would feel completely thwarted uh, if they didn't have a color that they needed or they weren't sure of a technique that they could use. And, you know, uh, especially when I would do like any kind of workshop or anything, it would be like, you know, what way can you get there? Um, and I have a lot of experience. Uh, I think you've got to have a lot of experience to be teaching beginners, right? I think like you should really know because you want to be able to show beginners. You can get there here. You can get there there. You can get there all these different ways. It's like grain eggs and ham. You can eat them anywhere, Sam, I am. You can eat them in this place or this place or this place. You know, knowing that there's a Goldilocks zone and it changes per the technique. These are important things to know. Mm -hmm. so that's why. That wasn't a short or quick answer, was it? I'm going to sip my coffee. Earth is in the Goldilocks zone. Earth is in the Goldilocks zone. you got to get me fresh water when you get up one time. Do I? Okay. I'll yeah, just back. one time. All right, so are not we at the, the end time, of this? this one time. No, we're not at the end of this step. Now at the at the end of the step, you can get it when I recap I all of this. So I'm getting a brighter red. It's true, it's a brighter red. I'm um, gonna come here and let's kind of tip in to these sort of little wing feathers. A little bit of this, and you can see that helps define some of this wing. Still quite dark though. Didn't get light on you. You don't define the wing. The you, wing defines the wing de itself. <laughs> the wing defines you. <laughs> So you just make any little touch-ups where you want anything to change. You look at it. Are you happy? Check your artist heart. If it feels good, you will have just completed the step. Will you? Yeah. All right, you recap and tell them. I'm going to recap what we did. So we had little blobby bird shapes. And after adding faces to our blobby bird shapes, we started to add value and texture with our brush. We used our number eight cat's tongue right here to create these textures like on the feathers and we did these sort of like layering techniques. I've got tape here to make sure that when I'm done with the tail and I finished all my highlights when I pull it, it will look like it's beautifully behind this branch. We added, we used Mars Black and Cad Red for a slightly deeper reddish value and then we used uh, Cad Yellow into both that mix and just a mix with Cad Red to create a little highlight here and maybe in here and little spots on the tails and heads came in and kind of created that layer. We did a little curve stroke here, a little sort of horseshoe, so you could get the wings in, added some highlights to his tail. And we came in, and, and in this one we used, I think, a little more of the cad red and Mars black into the body when we added the cad yellow, and we got some nice neutral beginning reds. The point of this is, is now that we've done this, when we come in next with the pure cad red, uh, and the bright pops of highlight, those colors will be so saturated and so uh, shock, visually, shock, visually shocking. Let's put on some bubbles because we're doing so good because we got there, man. We did this thing. Look at our birds. They're looking at us. They have birdie feelings. I got all three cups. Just needed one cup because we're actually really close to done because we're going to be step nine now, and there's only 14 steps. Step nine? Step step nine, I believe, yeah. Step nine, like I, this? I feel like it's step nine. Yeah. And you're going to need to, that's, that's what we're going to go on to do? That's what we're going to do. I recap, we're going to do, let's see if the thing, yes, more highlights. <laughs> <laughs> more highlights. More highlights. I helped you, I helped you highlight the feet earlier. The feet have been highlighted. Already. Even though the step calls for it, you've already done it, so don't worry about it. I'm going to load up some pure cad red. I'm going to get into that Goldilocks zone that planet Earth is in, where life exists. You know and what's that's funny? true in your painting. I haven't seen something in a, in, a, in a minute said. Huh. Texas snowflakes. Oh, Lindsay, thank you for oh, oh, Texas snowflakes. And Lindsay's dropping the sloppy cup, which is what I need. You know sloppy. what, though? Now we're in Pennsylvania where they have real snowflakes. But we still use Texas <laughs> snowflakes. So I'm going to take some pure cad red. I'm going to pop some little highlights in here Ooh. and little kind of feathery strokes. And you can see that those really kind of really pop. Pop, 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 pop. In a few places, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get some 
maybe like along here. Ops of that. A little bit of that. Let's uh come in and maybe add a bit of that there. I got a little crazy there, but I love it anyway, so I don't care. Don't paint out everything you've done. You did it for a reason. <laughs> Don't paint out everything you've done. You've done it for a reason. Mm. Right? And so that's an important thing to realize is like, well, I'm doing this right now, but I did those other things before because they were important. Sometimes I gotta get back into my, you know, CAD yellow in there. The highlights. I'm learning more about the cameras that I have. Than you've ever known before. I'm, I'm well, to some degree. Yeah. I mean, like, I can do more with them than I knew possible, and now I'm learning how to do that. You know? You know, if you've got to come back and tone with black or do any of that, you can get into it right now. You know, right now. You can put anything back you need to put back. Dark value, you can put it back. You have the power. Like the Transformers told you. I was like it. <laughs> That's what you do to get there. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. That's all they needed. That's all they needed. So what do we do? We came back through with mostly purely CAD red. We found areas that we wanted to highlight and exaggerate and explore. Uh, let's peel the tape. I'm going to do this. Always, I like to peel the tape off the opposite direction that I put it down on. Mm-hmm. And that way your little tail nice and clean, yeah. is nice and clean. And you can easily come back with your brown and black. And this is so much easier now. I'm not in my Goldilocks zone. I'm too wet. Add a little bit of detail there. Isn't that great? Yeah. Go figure. It's turning it. into a good thing. A step has been done. A step has been done. Is there any we, recap we to that We created step? red. We used cat red. We put pops here and the belly on the wings, different places to really bring that cardinal red forward, make them stand out against this incredible turquoisey blue background. Mm -hmm. We've added just a, maybe a couple more highlights where we put some yellow into that. If we needed some shadow we had to put back, we just played with it back and forth until our birds look like the fluffy red balls of joy they are. And now. Hi, Here. Brenna. I don't know where Brenna's going, but she's going. Uh, Brian Anthony says, I've been looking for a good cardinal painting for Christmas gift for mother-in-law. Now we need a blue jay one like this, or maybe I'll just uh, take away a cardinal and a blue <laughs> jay instead. It works. It's It'll just, work. You're gonna, you're gonna Combo it up. Color shift the bird. Blue jay's a good one, too. I have a really good mm. reference for a good I'm blue curious. jay. I'm curious. I'm going to see something. Just You stay there for just a red hot second before I'm going to stay here for a red letter. hot a second. And if I go to here, I wonder if we can go... Mm, no, they're wanting to stay red. You're trying to turn them into blue jays? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, can, I, I think at this point it would be easier to do a whole blue jay lesson. It would be. All right. So those of you that are using your step-by-step... -step, Flips it. Flips Snow it. on fence. All right. Snow on fence. Snow on fence. So we're now on step 10? 10. Snow on fence. Ten. Snow on fence goes real fast. Snow on sponge. the Sponge. You could use a sea sponge, or you can use a craft sponge, or you can use a cellulose kitchen sponge, but not the scrubby side. Mm. If you use your sponges for paint, they don't go back in the kitchen, as I tell my kids all the time. Paint sponges are not kitchen sponges. Kitchen sponges are not paint sponges. They need to live in separate spaces. So that's my safety tip. You're going to want to get your sponge lightly wet 
and I mean lightly. It should be damp. If you're not sure if it's damp, you can even wring it into a towel. It needs to be a little damp for the paint, but you don't want it to be so wet that it leaves, what is it? The Goldilocks zone. I'm going to load up with some white. Get some nice white loaded into the sponge. You can kind of swirl it around there. And then I'll get some blue into it because the first layer is a blue layer because it's for shadow. So we're going to come here and I like to pinch the sponge. Notice my pinch. My pinch, I need it to be bluer than that or it won't have contrast. Blue layer. Doesn't you want this line? This is your contour line to kind of be irregular and up and down and be interesting. I'll put a little bit back here. This one's a little harder to do because it's close to him. You may, if you're worried, you may want to move it to the front of the wood post. I'm going to stick with the reference because that's what you guys had. Don't look at the top of my head. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to take out all my fence and I'm using the sponge because it gives me texture, mm. a snowy texture, no less. There we go. Up and now. Even on the wood fence, I want some little delineation of shape. I can rinse it out. Thoroughly, 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 or just as much as I can in this bowl right now. Mm. This is not easy on your manicure. Rubbing alcohol or brush rescue from our store will get it off. So, dun, 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 dun. really just any rubbing alcohol. 81, 80%, 90%, somewhere in that range is really good. You can get by with 70%, but it just takes it a minute longer. I'm getting into this white paint. I've got a bit of a skin on it, which is where the paint was starting to skin over. So I'm going to pull that away. I'm going to use pure white. Pinch. The snow underneath is still wet, so it's sort of blending on the canvas. See how that does? Yeah. A little bit of snow. Snow, 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 snow. I could do propane. I can do this craft paint. This is student paint by the same line that does my pro paint. So it's very budget minded, but still quality because they're the same company. All right. Let's come here and snow it up. Tapping up and down. You can see I really move my hand away. I will try to leave towards this lower edge, more of a sense of blue. And that is because I want it to feel like it's like in shadow. By the way, you could do this painting very big on the wall. It would make an excellent mural. Mm -hmm. And all of these techniques work on window painting. And you just get the acrylic paint off when you're done using a razor blade and rubbing alcohol. Oh, yeah. You're wondering, can I use this lesson on my own window painting? Yes. I think you yes, can. you can. Just making it look snowy. Mm -hmm. Snowy, snowy, snowy. Snow on fence. Make sure you rinse your sponge out. Don't leave the paint on your sponge. And then let's recap. Okay. So I used a round craft sponge. I buy them in bulk. At the same time I buy me sea sponges. They both work for this. Your kitchen sponge will work for this. We're not worried. You want the sponge to be damp, not dry, damp, not wet. That's pretty easy. We start out with a mix of white and blue, a little bit darker, and you put your sponging out. You want to make a nice, interesting contour line when you do that. The sponge was pinched to help me control it. I put a little bit here, a little bit here, and a little bit here. I rinsed it out. Got it damp again, put white paint on, and went over the top, leaving a shadow underneath. Pressure was light, and I didn't like, I let it mix a little bit on the canvas, but I didn't intermix it a lot. So there's a lot of interesting shadow and depth and definition. Mm. Step 11. Step 
Eleven tea. Winter green on branches. Mm. Ooh, we put out green paint now. There Winter you go. Green on branches. Huh. Winter green on oh, wait, branches. Is that, is that, is we already. At, that's what. I, I must have the wrong graphic up there. That's what it was. Winter green on branches. Oh yeah, I did. I had step ten. We needed step eleven. Eleven? No, no. Uh, yeah. Step for step eleven. Winter green on branches. This one. We're making some. Nope. One before it. Oh, one before it. Sorry. <laughs> but you just, well, you're going to do that at some point. I think that one's almost at the end. Oh, that was 11. That was winter green on branches. No. Okay. Maybe I have the wrong one. But I step 11. Look. Step 11. This one right here. This one. Hmm. I'm showing in the book. It's this one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look, it helped us too. Back into my cat's tongue. A nice clean cup of water. We're going to make some greens. Now, our first layer of green. What is a good brush to use instead of a sponge? A uh, hog bristle brush, probably a rounded one. Let me show you. If I didn't have my sponge, what would I grab? I would grab this hot mess here, and I would probably stamp it up and down like this. That's what I would use. Victoria, see, that's a good question. And welcome, Christina, to Emoji Club. Oh, Krista. Krista Haley joined Emoji Club. Welcome to Emoji Club. <laughs> Woo! The brush and the mushroom are my daughter Luna Bella's emojis. And you should check them out and use them. They're super fun. And we got all kinds of stuff. Like we even have, did you guys notice there's a like you do? Mm -hmm. I did a like you do too. All right, let's put in the plants. So the plants really are going to start here. I'm going to get my brush wet. And I'm going to load up my... Thalo green and burnt sienna. I might even get some of my thalo blue in there to really deepen it. You just want to make a very dark color to start. And I like to layer or tile my um, winter green in. And I'm calling it winter green because, meh, it could be pine, could be holly, could be whatever. Now, they were noticing that the snowfall in this scene was a little different than the snowfall in the other scene. How's the snowfall different? Well, you got a little pile of snow behind the 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 wood to the so the, you know the post oh, is coming up. Thank you. You just didn't round I didn't up see as it. much. It was behind the. Ah, uh, okay. I can add it real quick though. You don't have to. We were just we were just you know snow falls differently in different places. The, maybe, I, it did, but let's 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 match it up. Maybe the wind was blowing. You know, there was some snow that that piled up in different places. That happens. Different snow pile. There you go. Snow. <laughs> Back More to ranges. Snow. So you just do a touch pull. I'm going to take it to about there and I fan it out. A little bit. There's a lot of uh, avoid getting out of the Goldilocks zone, which I just did there. Pulling it, pulling it. Now let's make some other little leaves that are coming up. Mm. Dark, dark leaves. Because these are. These are sort of showing underneath the, the bow here. And I do want a little few little leaves to come out this way. And, you know, perhaps there's some tucked out that way. Now, if, if you're having some trouble with the sharpness or fuzziness, again, check that little gear in the lower right-hand mm -hmm. corner and then select your resolution rather than being on auto. Because if you're on auto, it'll Oh, it's going to put it. you on your lowest. Yeah. So you want to go ahead and just... Select that manually, and you'll see that it probably helps smooth that out. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. All right. Make sure that I've got some nice greenery. It may get covered up by the bow, but it's peeking out there, so I'm good for whatever I need. It's peeking. When I have the green and the brown together, I can add a little bit of yellow to begin to lighten the color. And I'm going to work wet into wet because these are going to be blending on the surface. Oh. Again, same brush stroke. I don't paint out all my winter deep green because the deep green is what helps it show. It provides the contrastiness of the dark against the light in the... Burnt sienna, phthalo green, cad yellow, little blue if you need it. Get that there. Maybe put a little more green on my brush mixed into that and get some white. Ooh. It's very, very poppy. 
And it does, doesn't it? Nice little highlight popping there. Don't paint out everything you already just painted. You want little bits, mm. little highlights, little stuff that can be peeking through, showing this gorgeous bit of winter greenery. You can come back at any time with your green, you know, even your yellow. Fix anything you want. See? Yeah. The layers won't hurt you. There we go. Winter greenery. That turned out pretty good. If you didn't have this brush, you could use a filbert. You could use a round. You could use a different kind of filbert. So don't let the brush really throw you. Kind of pay attention to the motion. Where does the brush touch the canvas? Where is it releasing? See if you can notice the bend of the filaments. Um, and this, enjoy playing with a variable mixture. You know, some of it's green, some of it whatever. I have it pretty dark here, but I know I've got a big bow happening there, so I'm not painting too much up into that yeah. since I know I'm going to be painting over it in two seconds. You could add berries or flowers or things if you wanted to hanging off your winter greenery. Mm. Could work. Guess what? Now dry. You're going to dry be completely it? dry. Dry the surface. Completely dry the surface. Oh, it's so... It's important that you completely dry between the layer because as you add the red, the red being a contrast with the green will really get your dull and muted colors. So now is also a good time if you're going to put your red down, get some fresh paint, uh, some fresh water because uh, the clean water will help keep those reds nice and sharp when you're painting against the green dirty water. So you'll probably see Cinnamon change her water in here. here. I'll, I'll, I'll have her talk about that. But also make sure you thoroughly dry so you don't pick up any of the undercolors as you're putting your next subsequent layers on. Now, mm -hmm. as you're painting red mm -hmm. after green, it's good to thoroughly dry and switch paint water. <laughs> red and green also make brown. <laughs> so yeah, it's a great time to change your paint water. Make sure your surface is completely dry. In fact, while I'm letting it dry even after the hair drying, I'm going to take a little bit of my black and I'm going to get it wet. I just want a glaze of it. I, I don't mind it being it, it's thinner. And I'm going to come underneath my snow a couple of places and add a bit of a shadow. That's on the toe of my brush. Just a bit of a shadow that just shows the snow. Snow shadow. Well, I mean, it blocks light too. If your black is too dark, you could switch to a blue. Blues tend to be a bit more transparent. But the trick is, is you're saying, oh, there's a little bit of a snow drift. And it's happening. Wow. Right? Let me move my camera down there. Where are you at? Oh, you're over there. Just following along the bottom of what my sponging was, which is another reason why it's good to keep it from being too even of a line. Again, I'm not, it's not a solid line of black. It's glazing. Glazing means it's transparent. Oh my, cinnamon! You know what? What? If it, if people really like this, mm -hmm. they should click the like button down below to see if we can get oh, over five hundred likes. Oh, dude, yeah! Likes. If you like this and you'd like another free art lesson next Saturday, what are we doing? Oh, we're doing we're doing Miss Gorgeousness in the Christmas dress. Mm -hmm. So, and Tuesday I do uh, more involved kind of deep dive uh, paintings at the table. Um, yeah. I've got an eight by eight canvas, so if you want to do something the smaller, table at the table. We work at the tables. So uh, if you want to see more of that, definitely hit the subscribe button. If you want to see my watercolor lessons, go over and hit the like button on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, we've got like three it, free like lessons it. a week at minimum. And if you need more than that, we have a patronage where we do crazy things like nudes. Patronage. Nude dudes. Nude dudes. Nude there dudes. Huh? There were some. Nude but dudes. I like the flowers. You like the flowers? John's like, I like the flowers. I'm really about the nude dude. Oh, no, I it's like okay. the flowers. Guess what it is now? It's step two. It's uh, step 12. You mean like this? And look, look, I'm even I forgot to recap, though. You did. Well, that was not my fault that you forgot. To no, recap. I forgot. Can I recap anyways? Recap. Recap. Okay, we'll just really again. quick. The mixture was uh, burnt sienna, phthalo green, 
and a little bit of uh, phthalo blue if you needed it. You did a dark layer before it was even dry. You began to add some yellow into it to build up lighter layers. And then you added a little white into that mix to build up an even nicer layer. And we have kind of a nice little spray shape. And then we added a highlight using a glazing black under the snow. Under boom, boom. The now, snow. now we're there. We're going to paint the bow. Now we're there. Now we're there. Snowbirds, 12 levels. So if up you're... Very confident free handing, it's great. And you can do that right now. If you're not, I highly recommend this tool. This is a Dritz Taylor chalk tool, which is for tailors. For tailors, but it's for sure the Dritz, the Dritz one. I don't know about the off-brand one. The Dritz one has only clay. And so you can sketch your bow placement using this make a decision if you like where you're going to be putting it do you like what's going to be showing do you, do you want it bigger do you want it smaller all right how do you want it to be what's your bow what's your bow look like and so this is a really handy dandy tool handy dandy for bow sketching for bow sketching it makes me think of the uh handy dandy notebook when you're Bow indeterminate or indecisive. Maybe you want to bow to the left or bow to the right, and you're not sure how you're going to bow. You want to chalk it first. Bow how you want to bow. So we're going to use our CAD red and our Mars black, and we'll start just sort of doing that red sketchy in a bow. Let's paint it in. Let's block it in. I might move this over here. I'm not traveling as far to, to flew it up. Just on the toe of my brush. I'm drawing with my brush. I'm working the contour lines and I am blocking it in. They say your coffee is an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> it so is. That's why we made the first cup not paint water. But then I put paint water on the other side that of it. That took off I knew. all over the internet. So <laughs> <laughs> now we do other cups. Oh, I'm sure that we're not the first artist to put not paint water on a cup. Probably not. <laughs> but I didn't want to be in it in a scurry argument with the internet having that explanation. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a limited edition. <laughs> that was a limited edition. We may do it again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Paint water, not paint water cup. That was a good cup. It was a very good cup. I have a machine to do them now. That's right, you do. We make our own in Pennsylvania. Made in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Right next to the coloring books. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just paint in the bow. Painting. It looks like a little butterfly, right? It does. It looks like a big red butterfly. I'm going to put out a little more black. I've got some red. I don't think I, I, I may need to get a little more red out in a minute, but right now I just definitely need some more black. Mm. Obviously, I put out way too much yellow ochre and blue and other colors, but I've been spot on with the ones I've been doing here. In that Goldilocks zone. Who's in the Goldilocks zone? You are. John is now with his uh, switching. <coughs> his Goldilocks zone. Everything has uh, one. I just have to. It's actually, I'm, I'm, I'm still feeling a little awkward because I don't have all the buttons pre-programmed the way I need them. We so should do enough. like a training session where we get that done. I'm so sorry we haven't done that. I've been like. <sighs> I got some buttons programmed though. Three, three important buttons. The left, the right, and the center button. So I can look at those three cameras. Oh, we, they, uh, somebody came and stole the monolith. <gasps> No. Or it's gone now, anyways. 
it has disappeared. Yeah, there was a there was a link shared in group today on Facebook. Model in other monolith news. In other, if you're not following this, there was a mysterious monolith that showed up in the park in Utah, and now it's gone. We've all been wondering what artist did it, why they did it, and somebody suggested it was like leftover props from Westworld. I think or some maybe, movie set or like a camera mount or something like something. that. It was like. <laughs> we're going to come back here and we want this camera mount to be here. So we're just going to leave it because we don't want to have to mess the shot up and no one's going to notice it here. I'm going to take some black, right? Mix it in my red, but it's still, it's, it's a closer black. It's got a little red cast to it. And I'm going to start to add some shadows to the bow. It also can be nice if you've got uh, ribbons underneath a bow mm -hmm. to do a little shading where they're under the bow, and that'll help pull those forward. I'd be willing to bet news got out about the monolith, and the guys were like, well, we uh -oh. got to go, go get our camera mount now. <laughs> <laughs> we never thought they'd notice. All right, I'm going to dry this real quick because right. I'm going to add a bit of a highlight. Before I add highlight, highlight. So, yeah, just go in there and make sure you get good highlights in there. And don't worry about the chalk because that will come up later with just a little bit of water. So you don't have to worry about that at all. That'll she'll erase that as soon as we're done, done here. All right. I just want to add a little bit of a highlight, red highlight to it. And so easier if it's dry before I come in with the fluid highlights, making the, blow, the bow shiny. Mm -hmm. So shiny. Get this a little bit wet. Load up my brush with some CAD Red. Come here and paint this with the CAD Red across. And I'm gonna come in on my toe. I'll probably have to play with this a couple of times to get the exact shadows and, and highlights I want. And it's okay to spend a minute with your bow. Mm -hmm. Your bow deserves your attention. You can give it to it. Give it to your bow. It's worth it. Hmm. I just kicked off a song in some people's heads. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I don't know that song. No, you know what? Here's the thing. Um, uh, I, I, did, I don't know if you know this, but there's a whole category of video on YouTube called dance movies. Uh, nope. And I've been watching them. That's just where choreographers create, I guess, portfolio work, but then I get to enjoy it. Mm. And I don't even have to watch like World of Dance or So You Think You Can Dance or any of those. I just see all the my favorite. You're just like, just show Except me the talented Except one people. of my favorite choreographers quit to run for president in 2024. Don't do that. You don't yes. choreograph. Just man, don't, don't. It's crazy. Don't do it. You're such a good dancer. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's, I was hoping it wasn't true. But I think it is true. See, I, I, I want to see like a televised. That's a message you're never going to get from me, guys. I am never going to ruin my life that way. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Seems like a suck job. Uh, important, but sucky. So he quit. I would recommend him to you, but he's not doing it anymore. <laughs> he's so good, too. I was like, I had no idea what it, we've come, I mean, Debbie Allen is the thing and the hot chocolate nutcracker is amazing. Just watch that whole documentary. Debbie Allen's still being fabulous, you know, since fame, but it has mm -hmm. changed since Debbie Allen. You know, if you remember fame and you remember there was a character on there, I'm getting back into my black named Leroy and Leroy was like the actor, the dancer in that was like the most amazing dancer. And when he kicked, it was like everything on him got longer. Yeah, see. And it swung around in its ultimate fulcrum. And he and Bridgnikov went boingy, 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 boingy all over the stage like it was nothing. And when they landed, they didn't shift their feet. They were like, I land, I leap. I land, I leap. I land, land, leap. Sorry, I'm but fine. See when, see, when I dance, it's more like Macklemore's dance off. Ah, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm definitely more in the Macklemore range. <laughs> I'm going to continue to add these little. Make sure my highlights look how I want them. Some, some longer, some shorter, you know, like you do. 
And then I find it's a good idea to finish it all off with a bright cad red mm. uh, overbow. So I'm going to just load up my number eight cat's tongue. The overbow. There we go. Oh, it's the knot. Yeah. Not the true knot, because they suck. Not. How do you not know you suck if you're the true knot? I don't know. I live in a Stephen King universe. I'm so excited for The Stand. I've, I've watched every edition of The Stand ever. I'm so excited for The Stand, which is coming out. And I'm like, Argh! John's like, oh, God. I have no, no idea what you're talking about half the time when you do it. It's like, movie, 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 movie. <laughs> TV, 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 TV. Some stuff. Demon book, demon book, demon book, demon book. Demon. Okay, it's not a demon book. It is a rom-com fantasy book. It's so good. It's Taming taming Demons for Beginners. It's a four-part series. And I love it, love it, love it, There's love it. He does hear about it a lot. Which is I got my friends to read it. And so then we get together and confer about what has happened and what it means in relationship to previous books. And the Mist Village. Oh, yeah. Chaos Seeds? I'm just saying. That's know? like eight books in. Richter all the way. Miss Village. Gnomes rule. What step are you And on? we gnomed before I knew about that. So I'm not Miss Village. Miss Villagers, I'm not copying the gnome thing. We were gnoming. We had prior gnome. gnome. It just speaks to the ultimate gnoming. We also drink margaritas. Yeah. I'm just saying. We had the, prior gnome territory. I'm, we're not looking for the perfect margarita. Just any general margarita <laughs> will do. I'll pop a can on that. All right. So. Re- recap your step 12. I'm going to recap my step. Recap my step. So what did I do? I used chalk. You talked a lot. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, you danced and sang too. That was good. <laughs> they like that. <laughs> what? All right. So I outlined everything with a bit of chalk, right? Because that way, um, if I changed my mind, if I didn't like how my bow went, I didn't paint it in and I don't have that stress. And I highly recommend that to you. And that tool was the Dritz Chalk Tailor Tool. You can find it on Amazon. Just keep an eye on the Amazon stuff because they jack up prices when a bunch of people buy it. It does not make me happy. I painted in the bow that I sketched in with a mix of cad red and Mars black. It was red, but it was like that deeper red. Then I came through and kind of added a bit of a highlight and a bit of a shadow starting to create this. And then I dried it. And then I came back with cad red. and went brighter, 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 brighter. I hadn't even done this part yet. Bye-bye. And then I came back with a dark mix of Mars Black and Cad Red to create these deeper shadows. I went under here and kind of defined some shadows. And then as the last step, I went over the top. 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 Wasn't that a wrestling? That was a, it was a arm Sylvester wrestling Stallone uh, arm wrestling. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> You know what it is? It's, it's honey's right. Because if I look here to see what's going on, I'm like looking away. I'm like, we're somewhere out there. Hi. We're doing this. All right. You guys ready? So now dry it. Dry it. And then we'll be on to step 13. 13 is not mean. It's an easy, easy step. Okay. So, yep. We're just going to dry this. Make sure it's all good. You or I were asking. Someone was asking, where does Cinnamon teach her students? in Pennsylvania and the truth is she's you are all of her students she teaches this for free online so you guys can all get it we do have a patronage so if you want to help support what we do you can join the patronage and we put some bonus stuff up there but everybody here is cinnamon student all you guys learning today for free with her her students and that's what she's talking about what am I talking about her when you say your students you mean all of the people here yes today. yes yeah, I don't mean like you're like my you, Jedi you Padawan and I'm no, no. going to make you a Jedi Master. But you like, don't have like a place where you teach locally. Oh, no. Yeah. No. No, sometimes I have a retreat or a meetup or something. And and my patrons now do Zoom meetings with me where we paint together and they can show me stuff and I can see what they're doing. That's right. That's happening. That happens. But nothing locally yet. Nothing locally yet. I would be booked. Locally. I wouldn't be able to do the YouTube show anymore. I'm looking for my detail brush. There it is. All right. So now what I'm going to do is these bright white reflections. And that's what's going to help the bow feel like it's maybe satin or something that's a bit shiny. Hold on. Hold on. you got to tell the people what step you're <laughs> I now on. I thought you did on. it. No, 13. I haven't put the graphics up. You, did you, I thought you put the graphics up. Did I? I don't think so because put I it have up again. this 13. graphic. And look, I have the new. The reflection, the, the highlight reflection. See, there. The highlight yes, reflection. yes, yes. The highlight reflection. So 13 is where we're on. 13. Okay. Matches your PDF, which is free. Just download it. I don't mind. Print it up, staple it together, you're good. It's a little extra something. Mm -hmm. It'll help. So, 
I'm going to add a little bit of white to my detail brush. The trick about the highlights here is I actually break the line a lot. Break that line. And what break the line means is, is that I'll go along and the line will stop and then maybe I'll do a dash and then another little bit. Line is not consistent. I will contour outline some contour. of the folds where the shadows are because the, the fabric would be crested or folded to do that. It would cause a highlight. On the broad part of the bow, I might add a couple little wiggly highlights. Wiggly highlights. Wiggly, 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 wiggly. wiggly. Maybe on the edge here and then dot, dot, wiggle, dot, 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 little bits. See how we go? Little bit. And this is the fluid white paint that we talked about. When you read the PDF and every time it says FWP, that's what it means. That line went a little bit longer, and that's okay. And then, na, 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 na. So these little lines that I'm making were, uh, see if we want to come here, babe. I'll just show them there. Where? Uh, come to this upper corner. I'm right there on you. Okay. That's like a little calligraphy line. Okay. Right? It's got some wiggles to it. And so that's a little thing to learn to do with your brush. Break the line, break the line. By bringing this line in front, I put that bow, push that part of the bow back. These little lines just to sit there and say, you know, the, the fabric caught some reflection. Some reflection it's out glossy. there. Could be, those could be like, it could be a vinyl bow or a plasticky bow that's all shiny. <sighs> it leaves all that to the imagination. Yep. So if so, some of you folks have noticed that uh, if you're having trouble with buffering, that could be. Uh, a local issue because we're seeing that we have a pretty good strict connection here and sometimes if you just uh, you can select in the gear down there how much buffering you you want um, yeah if you take it down to a lower resolution it might buffer less it's actually there's a more complex thing now that you can choose how much uh, lag you have and if you choose more lag then oftentimes you end up with a higher uh, you end up with a better picture because it it can take time to collect up all the images and then feed them to you and make sure you get a full feed. And so, anyway. Guess what? There's tech in there. Now, we're about to go on to step 14, which Are is we? the last step. And it's a fast step. And it's also an optional step. So I'm going to recap what I did here, and then we'll talk about that when we get to 14. So what we did here is we took a tiny detail brush and fluid paint, which we mentioned earlier, could just yeah. be craft paint. It could be deco white craft paint. I like golden fluid, but you could do deco white craft paint. Little detail brush. This is a number one art Sherpa. You could use any detail brush you have. And we very carefully created outlines around edges of the bow, along reflections. We did something called breaking the line, which is where we don't do a consistent line. The line goes a little bit and stops and goes a little bit and stops. We had a little highlight reflections, came along here. By putting this line here, we pulled that part of the bow forward. By coming around this, we really pulled the center knot around. And now we have something that looks really three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So now you can put up the step 14, John, and I'll tell them everything they need to know the about step, step 14, which is an optional step. Let's see if it works. <gasps> 14, right? Now, it's not the last page of your PDF because I have more information for you guys about things you could do with your art and techniques and terms and stuff like that. Just in case you weren't familiar with some of the stuff I was saying, it would give you another kind of way to anchor into that information. Splattering. Splatter. Splattering. Snow, sea foam, stars, all of it. Sand, all of it. Practice your splatter. I've got a video 
all about splatter, different ways you can splatter. You don't have my splatter tool? <coughs> no problem. I have a video on how you can splatter without the tool. The trick to splatter is you take a scratch piece of paper. It's like, you know, I think it's nice to have like something that has color into it, like construction paper. <sighs> Test your splatter on its first. So you can see, is my splatter too wet? Because you got to get a Goldilocks zone on your splatter. <coughs> I know. That's you got to get a Goldilocks zone on your splatter as well as everything else. So is it too wet? Is it too dry? Are the drops too big? Are they too small? So if you're like, man, that's too much and I don't need that, just sign it. You're good. <laughs> but if you want to get that snowy, cheerful, winter cozy effect, that little floating flakes of perfect little snow would give you, then splatter is the way to go. Let me sip. Mm. How we get to the splatter, I'm going to use, this is a tool that I had made. I have several tools for splattering. This particular one does a small to medium oh, particulate. There you go. It looks like a toothbrush. You would not never put it on your teeth because it's stiff. Right? I have my fluid here. This keeps me kind of in the Goldilocks zone. And I'm very familiar with it. I kind of squish and move it around in my brush so that there's a good distribution. I'm going to come here and flick back. Oh, you're fast with that thing. Yeah, it's a fast step. Flicky, flicky, flick. Flick, flick, flick. How much it's snowing is entirely up to you. Could be snowing a lot, could be snowing a little. It's hard to see all the contrast of that snow. I'm going to try to adjust. You'll have to go zoom close and then travel around. Like he had a bunch of snow on his butt for some reason. You can see, so I'm going to adjust the, 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 the camera down so you can just. There we go. That's all that's now. Here, you do, the, I'll stand back and you do the zoomy through. Yeah, that's can really stand uh, they, they, they ju I just did okay. all that. Yes, all right. Okay. So when that's done, you're going to take a detail brush. I like to load it with the white and I'm going to come here at the bottom of the fence and sign my name. There's a little red on my brush and that's okay because these are colors I have in the painting. And my signature, if I put a big crazy signature right here, then you're gonna see my signature in the same way you see the bow or the bird. So you've gotta decide, is your name more important than the painting itself? Right. Right. So I'm trying to be thoughtful about how I sign. Now, remember, if you just came in, don't forget, if, especially if you're new to painting, to download your free PDF. Sometimes we, we, we correct things as we go so you can always check back. Because if you guys give me a bunch of feedback, sometimes I'll add or update or change something to make it easier for you. On Saturdays is PDF day. Mm. I cannot get PDF day on Tuesday. Tuesday, you just got to come paint with me. So we're going to be painting Tuesday, Santa's face. And then next Saturday, we're going to be painting kind of like a version of Mrs. Claus. But she's like the glamorous, glorious, most amazing Mrs. Claus you've ever seen in a Christmas tree dress. Oh. Right? So, and then the watercolor Wednesday is a fox in fire and snow. And it's just gorgeous white fox and fire and snow. So download that. That's at theartsherpa.com. The pinned comment on the live chat has links to the traceable, to the PDF, and to the event page, so you can get all your resources, all of your references, everything that you need. Um, man, hit the subscribe button, okay? Hit it, yeah. hit it, thumb it up, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment, tell me what you think of this new thing. Now, we do you have the end screen that I sent mm -hmm. you? So we have an end screen, and what we realized after being online forever is that you guys, I say goodbye, and I go fast, and then you guys are still, like, visiting. So now, we have an end screen, and we play the Heart Party song, the official uh, the official original theme song, all the way through, and that gives you guys a chance to say goodbye. But I'm going to say this. Be safe out there. Like, especially this winter. Take care of yourself, your health, and your family. Right? Be really aware of that. Take care of each other. And I want to see you and an easel really soon. Bye-bye!
It's a lot of fun, believe me. Just join me right here.